Got the Zastava ZPAP 92. This is like an eight and a half inch, uh, 762 by 39. Because you guys wanted to see this as a cheek pistol. So here it is. Uh, this comes from the factory with this pick rail. I just put the hollow sun lower one third optic on there. And I took the, uh, the crink thing that doesn't do anything off. So um, yeah, here we go. This is Wolf 120 two grain something like that uh we have a 12 by 20 target but it's angled 30 degrees forward at 20 yards so roughly a 12 by 12 target at that distance <laughs> 107 for the pair from a high compressed ready guys this is like where I could get through a skinny whatever and never have a muzzle on anyone. Uh, 0.16 splits. So lesson there is uh, this is pretty easy to run from the cheek. And um, I'll just tell you right away, probably not a big fan of running this lefty unless, uh, unless I got my mouth wide open and I don't have teeth to worry about, right? Because uh, that charging handle will come all the way back there. Um, yeah, too close for comfort on, on going lefty with this, but otherwise, everything's there. Point 0.17, 0.15, 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.11 on the left. So here's my thoughts, guys. Uh, I've tested AKs in cheap pistol format in the past before and was not really happy. Um, this is a refreshing change. I think this is a winner. Now, the ZPAP 92, uh, the reason why is it is a winner is this. Uh, that barrel length and the gassing of that gun specifically is pretty tame. Uh, it does not have the stinging sensation in the hands that a lot of AKs do. Uh, the, like, some of the AKs are very snappy. I don't you know, there's magic there, a balance between spring rate and gassing. But this one, it has that magic. Um, I could cheek all of them, but it wasn't something that was comfortable, right? I was getting a lot of vibrations through the dust cover. Uh, I find that the reason, I think the reason I'm not getting as many vibrations through the dust cover, number one is gassing, but number two is it's a hinged dust cover. There's not so much rattle there. Uh, I, if you're going to build a cheek pistol AK, I suggest using, I, I mean, I suggest this gun. It's a, it's a good gun. All I did was buy this gun and throw a lower one-third optic on it. But if you're going to try and replicate this with some other build, I would say go for the forward-mounted, uh, dust-cover-mounted optic, lower one-third um, height roughly there. Uh, with that that rail there may be higher depending on how that pick rail sits on that dust cover um, leave your handguard open and uh you know don't don't do like the the gas tube mounted optic i've done those in the past and you know finding a place for your support hand was uh more difficult right um yeah, I think I think that setup works. Uh, I will probably be throwing a more upright grip on this, uh, just because I like that when I keep that compressed. But yeah, uh, that's that's my thoughts on this. This one is a go. Um, now, what what would I use this gun for? Uh, this may win out over the cheek pistol AR for being the ultra shorty thing. What I can tell you is that this gun it's a ten inch barrel. Uh, it has a roughly 18 or 19 inch overall length. Um, if I throw on a muzzle device on there, it'll probably just come just underneath 20 inches. And with that length, uh, cheeking it and standing, even if I just, if I hunch into that gun a little bit, I can still get through doorways and pie corners just, just fine. I'm never worrying about bumping a muzzle or anything there. So I don't have to adjust my technique to the environment. I just run the same way all the time. That's why I like that. That's why I do that. So uh, yeah, I can still thoughtlessly push my way through a house and keep all of my concentration 
on IDing what I'm seeing in front of me instead of moving a gun around in, you know, tight confines. Uh, so I, th I think that works. Um, I think that terminal ballistics wise, it probably has an advantage in, uh, in structures like houses and cars, it probably has an advantage over 5.56. Five, uh, doing glass testing, I'm going to do more of that, but the glass testing that I've seen, um, both 5.56 five, five, and 7.62 by 39 and 300 blackout have similar deviation through windows. They both punch through windows just fine, but they have deviation about half as much as you'd see in pistol caliber carbines, so it's a, a benefit there. Um, 7.62x39 is definitely better at punching through intermediate barriers like uh, like studs and walls or like car doors. You know, I'm talking about the hard parts, right? Anything can punch through the soft skins of car doors. But uh, 7.62x39 will often make it through some of the hard parts and some of the parts of A-pillars in cars. So uh, you can get through those. You're never going to get through two. But you can get through one pretty reliably with 762 by 39 which you can't always do with 556. So I think um, maybe it has a benefit there. Maybe it has a, a little bit of edge over 556 builds, regardless of length, um, in that environment. Uh, I think that for shorties specifically, the shorter you go, the more that 762 by 39 shines. Even more than 300 blackout, in my opinion. Um, I think that... Uh, this build shines over 300 blackout builds because it knows what it is, right? It's not trying to be a sub gun. It's not going to allow you to run subsonic loads like 300 black will. It's just going to force you to use the right ammunition that actually works, um, which is, right, if you're running 300 blackout, even the supersonic loads are slightly less energy than 762 by 39. So I think that's an edge there. Um Terminal ballistics out of that short barrel, 10-inch uh, barrel, right? Uh, we know that you can get good terminals out of an 8.5-inch 300 blackout. I know you can get better terminals out of a 10-inch 7.62 by 39. So, yeah, I think all around, whether you're punching through barriers or clothing or just into flesh, uh, if you load it correctly, 7.62 by 39 is going to perform better. Um, all of the all of the rifle loads at rifle velocities are allowed. I will say that 762 by 39 and 300 blackout supers are quite a bit less harsh on the ears than 556. They're just something high pitched and annoying about ARs in 556 that just uh maybe this is me, but just yeah. Um anyway maybe a, a slight edge there. So uh, for use case, this gun, I think you could use this as a home defense gun that you could very easily move or maneuver around your house with. You could use it as a ranch gun. Um, you know, all of the cheek pistols are basically the same use case, uh, but the caliber here and I think the uniqueness of the AK platform maybe lends itself to more, uh, more specific scenarios better than others, right? CP33, you want to be nice and quiet. Uh, you want to not worry about overpenetration. You want to um, have just enough. You want to have a whole lot on tap. You want to have a really tiny, compact gun. Cool. It's great for that. Uh, for this, it's a bit heavier. Um, you know, it's. I'll say this. It's still the same weight loaded as the... Uh, what, the Maxim PDX, the five and a half inch 5.56. Five, so both of them are, are chonky. I think it's like seven and a half, eight pounds loaded uh, with light and optic on there. Um, anyway, weight difference between the 5.56 five, build and this uh, is about the same. Now, if you're going to do a, my, an ultralight 5.56 five, five, build like I have done in the past, the 7.62 by 39 build, the ZPAP, it's a bit heavier, um, but I think if you're worried, um, if you're worried more about really just penetration, so I don't know, you have the bear scare or whatever, um, 
I probably would trust large game uh, more with the 7.62x39 out of a short barrel than I would with 5.56. Five, um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty easy. I think that the AK lends a lot of dumb reliability to the platform. So when I say dumb reliability, like the problem with ARs is that everyone is tempted to tinker, myself included. And you can you can get peak performance in peak conditions there in a lot of those guns, uh, and then you're left with a product that might not have peak performance in you know subpar conditions. Whereas an AK, the most you can do to them is a few tweaks and. Uh, yeah, you can screw them up, but it's a lot harder to screw up the reliability of an AK, in my experience, than it is to screw up the reliability of an AR, especially in the short barrels, um, especially when you're talking about 762 by 39 versus 556. Five, so, um, you know, if you just want an end of days beater gun or a ranch pistol that you're going to throw in the truck, uh, to go around the property and you need to have the capability to deal with large game or small game or anything, um, two-legged threats, four-legged problems, whatever, yeah, I don't think it would be a bad route. The other consideration here is uh, the timing, right? Geography and timing. In this time, it's hard to find quality loads that perform well out of short barrel 556 five, builds. It's hard. I'm struggling finding that. And I don't really want to load defense loads for any gun. So it's much easier for me to um, get a 762 by 39 short barrel and know that just about any load is going to do okay uh, out of that short barrel. Because in 556, five, that's not the case. Um, in short barreled, short barreled 556 five, builds, some ammo is like just exactly 22, 22 long rifle. I'm not going to say that's terrible, but you're not getting any of the real benefit of a rifle cartridge there other than, you know, accuracy. So yeah, I think that uh, 762 by 39 shines when you're in an ammo crisis. It's almost like it's a gun that was developed by people who were in materials crises. Uh, yeah, it works. Um, I didn't think that I was going to enjoy shooting that gun. And I had a really good time shooting that gun. And I have no desire to put a stock on that at all, which is a different thing for me when I'm talking about AKs. So much so that uh, here's a weird use case and this may just be my state's laws and whatever um but uh that is the way that i have that set up is perfectly legal to take elk with in my state and i'm thinking about it i might actually use this as my elk gun in this upcoming hunting season so um before you guys bitch about that just so you know i have successfully taken taken elk with uh, AKs and um, very short barreled 300 blackout pistols before. So, uh, you know, one shot done. So, um, yeah, it, that might be a use case too, where it's something short and uh, it's actually a heck of a lot shorter than the Grendel. I'll say this though, um, probably only trust that out to about 100 yards, whereas I know the Grendel, if I needed to, I can reach out quite a bit further so there you go guys uh yeah i've got a lot more testing to do on this i'm going to do some gel stuff and we're going to go into the weeds with this build but there's the initial impressions um guys patrons you guys asked for this so uh quite a few of you quite a few of you asked for 762 by 39 or ak cheek pistols so that's why i did this uh keep sending me those suggestions i'll keep doing that stuff Guys, thank you for for um, for your support. Like you, you made this possible. You guys paid for the ammo. You guys paid for the guns. Awesome. I'll keep doing that stuff uh, as long as I can keep being supported by you to do it. So yeah, you guys are rocking it, guys. If you want to support me or not a patron yet, 
There's a link in the description. Go on Patreon, sign up. Uh, let me know what you guys would like me to uh, tinker with next or where you want me to go more in depth. Um, that's what I got for you guys today. Uh, but I'll leave you guys with this little clip of, right? It's got to be some AK mag dump stuff because it wouldn't be an AK video without just some burt into the berm. So guys, keep training. Stay safe.